Hey everyone and welcome back to another Flow Ninja video. In this one, we're gonna be going over how you can clean up your Figma file and prepare it to develop it in Webflow a lot easier. So, let's jump straight into it. So, at our agency Flow Ninja, we're usually working on many different end-to-end -end projects where we handle design, development and kind of the full scope of uh, of a web project, but from time to time we have some enterprises we're working with that have their full stack design team in-house or just some clients actually have their design already done and are looking just for the implementation part. When working on those kind of projects, we realized that many times when we get the design itself, it's really broken in the end. I mean, kind of, there are no global font styles, there are no global partings, margins, nothing is grouped together. It's pretty hard to export things from the world, from the file itself. So that's what why we created uh, kind of the unlimited kickoff file, which is gonna allow you to prepare your uh, kind of Figma for development. If you're preparing for you, so you can make your dev process a lot easier. If you're maybe working with our agency and preparing the file. Uh, to hand over to our agency for development. So that's gonna allow us to actually QA the website and make sure that everything is as exactly the same as in Figma in Webflow and that we don't have anything kind of uh, missing out on our front. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into the first step. So uh, by going to our website and going to free resources, um, you're gonna be able to find the project uh, kickoff style guide. So by signing up to download, you're gonna be able to go to this screen where you're gonna be having the Webflow version. And then also, you're gonna have the Figma file to download. When you go to the Figma file itself, like here, you're gonna be able to see that kind of we have body, all pages, which font we're using. We have desktop styles for jumbo heading, heading from one to five, six, or uh, paragraphs, quotes, labels, links, uh, or, or ordered lists, unordered lists, rich text, etc., etc. Then afterwards, we have how are all of those tablet styles and kind of mobile style scaling to mobile and tablet. So we have all of that set up here. Then moving forward, we have all of col all of the colors. So we make sure that we actually have a shading system for our colors that we don't end up uh, with uh, 50 different uh, shades of, of blue so that we don't get, that we cannot use global colors in Webflow and can end up in a problem uh, on that side. Or we can add secondary colors like as many of them as we want to. But the most important things uh, is that all of the colors are connected to the global style guide. And the same thing follows on the top. So like we need to make sure that all the headings are connected to global style guide. So you can see heading, uh, jumbo heading, heading one, heading two. We're also adding a font size, line height, letter spacing. And then from time to time, we're also adding the margin bot. Just because sometimes we add default margin on the bottom on the Webflow side, depending on the project, is uh, that going to be a design pattern that's always happening or not? So we can always kind of know that uh, in the back of our head when we're designing in the end. And then also connecting the global styles for tablet and connecting the global styles for mobile in the end. Moving forward, uh, we're going to be also adjusting global text colors. This is something that gets overlooked uh, many times as uh, in the end, kind of we want to have a global font color for the body. And then if that's technically on, um, on a white background or if it's on a dark background, kind of we're probably going to be using some of the additional classes for neutral colors or for brand text colors in the end. Um, then uh, what we see many different times happening in terms of the designs is that they don't have group sections and that they're counting on how much padding they have from top and bottom and that that is done in a systematic way. So that's why we have kind of these uh, uh, kind of examples of kind of which, uh, which paddings are we using for sections and we can kind of implement that in, uh, in the design itself. Afterwards, we have margins. So, I mean, of course, we're going to be able to add the margins that are a little bit different than this. And like every single time for every project, we can adjust these uh, preset margins and even add more than those. But it's important that we have some sort of a base margin uh, we can work with so we can use utility classes when spacing things around in Webflow and not create a new class every single time. We have max width, uh, we have buttons, and then every single kind of state for the button itself because this is overlooked many different times. And then sometimes there are just two tiny variations of a button itself that uh, don't actually kind of be worth in the design in the end. So that's why it's important we have uh, kind of buttons pre-filled out input fields and making sure that all of the input fields are filled out as expected. Text area fields, radiant checkboxes, container, container or grid, um, icons and making sure that we don't have icons 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 pixels, but that we can actually 
end up in a icon system sometimes there are a little bit more icons than this but yeah i mean kind of uh, what you're gonna do about it but the important thing is that we have it set up here so then uh, we're gonna hand off and kind of take a look at how we usually get design files. I mean, this is unfortunate. I mean, and I know that many designers are not technical oriented and that's why Webflow is a great tool allowing even designers to learn a lot more about development, maybe jump into Webflow and develop it in the end. But just this technical knowledge and knowing how to prepare your design file for development is gonna allow you to create that much better designs in the end that are gonna look nicer and be much easier for development, et cetera, et cetera. So, in terms of things that are wrong here, I mean, looking the logo here, it's not outlined, so we're not gonna have any way to export that in Webflow um, or kind of upload it as a logo. Um, the whole header uh, is not actually kind of joined as a group here. So you can see here that uh, this should be a hero section, but it's not. The H1 is not is technically an H1, but after that, we don't have any global font styles connected to, to Figma. So when developing in Webflow, we wouldn't know which size of the font this is, and it's gonna make the development that much harder. Is this an H2? Is it also an H1? Should we add an H1 class to it? And how does it work in the end? Then uh, for paragraphs, it's the same for all of the fonts, I mean, in general, in the ideal scenario, or any font found on the website here uh, is gonna have a global um, um, style guide, the, property set up from Figma. Um, then again, uh, going over here, it's gonna be a little bit harder. I mean, kind of this is not in a four pixel grid. Uh, we don't have the grid actually visible here to follow in the end in Webflow. So we're not sure when this gets bigger, is it kind of stopping there or is it kind of going to, to the end of the, of the design itself? Here again, we're not following any grid. This is just kind of placed around. So we're not sure how to position that in Webflow. Again, for this here, not in a grid, nor this is actually all connected together. So you can see like from here to here is 155, from here to here is 95, but I'm not sure is it gonna that, uh, is, this is 84. Um, then here for the button, let me just grab this, is 81. So it's gonna be pretty hard for us in Webflow to actually identify and kind of use um, a, a global style guide uh, if we have this much of our random paddings and margins. Uh, in our scenario here, we're gonna have some presets of which paddings and margins we're gonna be using. And that's when designing a website, we're gonna be choosing from some of those. Sometimes we were maybe uh, gonna be adding no padding top and just padding bottom or whatever, but we actually have, let's say 10 different va uh, variants of paddings to choose from. And that's gonna standardize our design and make it that much easier for development or for cleaner development in the end. Then again, this should be grouped as a whole section and they're just kind of taking 152, 153. I mean, that, that's fine, but again, just kind of making sure that we are in a four pixel grid and that we know from uh, which element to which element, how much space we need. This should be a footer that is global also. So this should be connected. It's also making you designing the, the, the design itself a lot harder. Then moving forward, I mean, the designer tried adding some of the global components, but not everything. We actually, not every single bits and pieces we need in order to develop in the end properly. Moving forward, we have uh, this, like this should be grouped together. Um, this should be grouped together in a card so that we know that is a card. Uh, like here, we're uh, like, like a, again, a global font style is not added. Then moving to all of the pages, I mean, like you can see all of that. Then if we would start developing everything on, on this side, there are many things that we would consider. Like how does the mobile menu look like? Like our developers can probably create a version, but I'm not sure is it that gonna be the best possible case for the mobile navigation. So we're gonna need a mobile navigation design. How does it look on mobile? I mean, at least having one single page design on mobile is gonna do that much more um, than not having anything so that we know kind of design-wise what to follow. Kind of how's the success state gonna look like? How's the error state gonna look like here? Um, how's the success state gonna look like here? How do they look on hover? How do some elements look on hover? So many of those questions are gonna start appearing when we start developing. And it's much better that we clear those out as when we start than to jump into development and to wait for the designer or whatever to clear those things up or that we design something on our own kind of in the agency that was not maybe something that the company intended. So in the ideal scenario, uh, you would copy the final design or kind of final draft of the design over to the kickoff file and then end up on something like this. So you can see that the core, uh, the, the, the full, I mean here, style guide is filled in. So we filled in and identified what is the jumbo heading, which are the two fonts we're using, how are all the headings scaled, which fonts we're using, how they're getting scaled to tablet and mobile designs, which colors we're using. I mean, for this template, of course, I mean, 
we're not using the kind of uh, we're not using many different colors so in that case it's gonna be um, a little bit uh, harder to kind of have those neutral primary whatever colors but again like at least we have some colors we're using what is going to be the body copy what's going to be the neutral text colors we're going to be adding in webflow how we are identifying sections uh, margins what buttons we're using this is a white button and then a dark one what inputs we're using in this case we're not using all of the inputs so not every single scenario is designed but if you have time it will be ideal that you actually design every single one of them how the checkboxes are looking etc etc and then the great thing about this is when we jump to the design itself you can see that right now this is how should every single design that you hand off to your team uh, that you develop i mean when you start developing on your side also is gonna be technically a little bit longer in the beginning, but it's going to make the dev process on Webflow that much faster. So you can see here we have, first of all, we have the hero section, we have the header, we have the logo outlined, uh, we have every every single item, I mean, named. That's what, what we like doing. I know that sometimes like naming even those kind of groups can take a little bit more time than expected, but I guess we have a little bit of an OCD in our agency that we like actually preparing everything in Figma like, it, like we're developing in Webflow in the end. Then, I mean, this is an H1, no, I mean, this is a jumbo, this is a body copy, this is a button, and this is the whole section, and then thinking of kind of how is that going to be scaling from top to bottom. Again, here, we have everything added to the grid, so we're following the grid system, so we actually know where to position the items that we're uh, looking on the screen. Uh, everything is, I mean, connected to the global styles. Here we have error states for the form, we have thank you for the form and how that's going to be looking like. Uh, we have email errors here on the bottom. We have the full mobile style here and then how the navigation is going to look like when you open it up. For these items, I mean, these are created uh, with cards. You have an H1 explaining what the page is uh, and then kind of who are our trainers. Um, then kind of on hover state, we can see their LinkedIn profile. So that's pretty, pretty uh, fun to have as an effect. Here we have two different variations we can probably discuss with our dev team. Gonna, are we going to have this as a slider or we're going to have this like this? For make your appointment again, like this is an H1, uh, this is going to be an H2, these are going to be H3, which are from SEO perspective going to be great to follow. I mean, I know that not every single design in the end is going to be able to follow kind of pattern like this. Sometimes we're going to be using fake headings and adding additional classes in order to follow the SEO structure for the headings. Uh, but again, I mean, kind of, it's going to be that much easier for us to follow this. So for every single page, I mean, when we have a, an effect like this, where we are going to having a hover state, you can see how the hover state is going to look like. So there are no questions asked on that front. And then this is prepared for mobile also. So by just adding that, like probably like four hours of work, I would say, maybe not, maybe not even that, like depending on your project, like maybe it's going to be even a week of work. Uh, you're going to create a dev-ready uh, Figma file that's going to be pretty easy to develop in Webflow. And then on our side, as we have a QA team again, uh, kind of sometimes devs can overlook something uh, internally in our team. Uh, and the QA team is going to know, okay, this is exactly how it should look in Webflow and how it should work in Webflow. And then you can actually compare those two together. Uh, versus here, where kind of having a proper QA process is going to be pretty hard. Just because we're looking at a design and then we were consulting with a designer. Is this an H1? Is this an H2? How should we kind of approach this? Kind of what should the process be here? Uh, kind of is the margin like uh, 15 or 85 or whatever? Kind of did we adjust that and standardize that in Webflow? Sometimes we're doing that, but it's not the ideal way on how you should treat your designs. So based off of this, Hopefully you're going to be getting a little bit more of an insight how we prepare our design files for Webflow. And kind of basically after that, you're going to be cloning the style guide here, filling in the style guide in Webflow uh, fully, uh, like with everything we have uh, in Figma. And based off of that, you're going to be able to start the development that much easier and follow your design. So do let us know kind of when you start using this on your own projects, how does it feel? Do you feel that there are some fields that we should be adding to the kickoff file or can I be improving that process? Or can I just sh share with us kind of your final Figma files and did actually this help you become a better designer or a Webflow developer or can I help you out uh, in when you found out a new client? Uh, to, to, to show them this video and kind of say, okay, you should go ahead and prepare a Figma file like this, send it over when it's done, and we can start development. So yeah, uh, looking forward to the next video and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.